Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his teardown lab. Before you is a Spectrum Plus keyboard, and uh, I can just about show it to you by putting this panel here to have all the keys fallen out. Look, that's what it oh, <laughs> that's what it looks like. I actually have a bit of a duff enter key, so I'll sort that out while I'm here. But I want to show you what's up with it. Basically, this membrane thing here is duff. It's, it's a dead membrane. This membrane is serving no purpose right now. And I have had a look. There's something called a rewap, rewap um, keyboard that you can get. So it sort of seems to be like 15, 20 quid. Seems kind of expensive for a membrane, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. We've got no choice in this matter. Now I've looked around it and I can't see where the fault is, to be honest with you. It's really, really tricky. I mean, it's basically made of all these layers of stuff and I don't know if any of the layers they kind of probably ought to clamp together a little bit because look here you can see there definitely some interesting multi-layer stuff going on on all of these different things I don't know if those are alignment or they're supposed to make electrical contact or what there's definitely a lot fishy so I thought this without really having anything to lose look at the color this one's just all black on black um, maybe I can just kind of dis dismantle it a little bit really and just put it back together and see if it makes any difference other than breaking it. So these things are just put together in layers and they're, um, they're normally adhesive. I, I know this because I've destroyed so many modern keyboards with spilling coffee down them that I've kind of tried to do this. It's never worked out to be honest with you. But have a look there. So there is the layers. So that my idea is, oh, there we go. It's just carefully, as well as careful as I can, just take the layers apart, give them a bit of a clean, and then put them back together. And I think there's, oh, be careful there, there's at least three layers. Whew. Now just, if you're doing this, just be prepared that it's probably gonna ruin your key, keyboard, because uh, if it tears, so, if something tears, it's a goner. And actually, the chances of it all going back together and adhering in the right way is pretty slim anyway. But it's just, oh, uh, again, we've got nothing to lose. I can do it so you don't have to. That's fine by me. Right. So the symptoms of this keyboard are between doing nothing at all or continuously just sort of hitting a key like space or something. Right. So we've got... The top layer off so just to show you that's the top layer and look at the filth filthy contact the contacts themselves are good actually the filth is just in these ribbons it's a little looking a little bit strained and I'm just studying studying with my eyeballs here see this contact we've got these metal contacts here but I, they don't seem to go anywhere or if they have maybe they've been ripped off yeah there's definitely some damage there but it's hard to tell really. I've can see if we can measure continuity. I've got this new meter, let's have a go. Put it on the continuity mode. Look, I haven't even unwrapped the probes. Yeah, so we've lost continuity here. So maybe there's an opportunity to try to repair this. I, I, I was gonna order, it's really annoying. I was gonna go on Exos's site, you had a load of paint uh, I might have to make some you can make your own basically conductive paint I'm going to try it now just a bit of pencil because sometimes that works not quite I mean how conductive does conductive need to be see pencil is conductive so let's try and just have a look again maybe we'll grind down the pencil and mix it with some you know adhesives Try that. I reckon we can do that, you know. Oh, I can see on the meter, you can't see the screen, but the. It is actually measure. It's not enough con conductivity for the actual buzzer to buzz, but it is saying it's conducting. But anywho, let's not worry about that because there's going to be more of those if we're going to go deeper. Now, do we feel the need to go any deeper in these layers? That's the question. Um, let's have a little look. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Just looking at this just to see what 
how that's working. I'm always wondering now, if you see these contacts on the right, they'll marry up to the contacts on the left. They're going to have to be clamped together. So those clamps, some clamps in there, they're really quite critical. So be sure the clamps are clamping correctly on those. And again, I might just dash this on them or use some of that copper tape. If you remember on my game and, a, game and watch repairs, I was doing that with the copper tape. In fact, I'm not going to touch this bit. I think that's my next experiment. I'm just going to rub pen pen over all these suspect looking joints and these bits here where they seem to have to mate up. So we're going to coat everything in a, a graphite and see if that just does anything beneficial. In fact, let's move that there. So look at this area here. So it's all a bit Charmander here. Okay, I'm going to get the pen. Just do that. Just do that. So then when all the clamps clamp each other, there's just that little bit of extra conductive material between them all. And it might just work. Okay, let me show you what I've done now. I've basically gone over all of the contacts that make contact between the layers with the pen. And it looks good. Look at that. Well, I say pen, pencil. It looks nice and clean. Plenty of uh, conductive material there. Now this one where there was a gap, I wasn't able to fix in any decent way. So what I've done, I've stuck on the other side, the flip side, a bit of copper tape. So the idea is it will hopefully bridge that. So we we'll give that a go. We've got nothing to lose really, have we at this point? Um, and what we can do while we're at it, there's no harm in sticking a bigger piece because just looking at where it is, there's no chance really of it shorting out. So let's just put another piece. I don't mind doubling it up, you see, because it'll make it a bit thicker. There's a screw goes right there next to that. So that's got a good opportunity to try to sort of squash those together and hopefully make more contacts. Let's get that out. So you can see I put a nice slim piece in there originally. This one's going to be a bit fatter over the top. Booyah, that's all it is. Just a bit of copper tape there. So let's see if we can laminate the layers back on. So I try not to touch it up too much and all the contacts and things look really clean, you know, through these sort of separators. Even though there's a bit of funk up here, there's a bit of sort of residue of something. It's not really anywhere near those key bits. I suppose if you really wanted to, and I'd be really reluctant to use one of these though, um, is to, you could just sort of very gently clean those. <laughs> but I just, I don't, I think, I think there's more chance of causing a problem on this board right now. It's, it really doesn't look that bad at all. So I'm just gonna try to line up a couple of the holes. That's my target basically. Um, yeah, not great to be honest with you. I kind of missed a bit, but let's just see how these things line up on the where they'll clamp. So this is where the rubber meets the road. You can see they're slightly not aligned, but that doesn't matter. I think they're going to make a really good contact on those clamps. Let's try this side. Oh, but this side is way, way worse. So it's probably worth me now putting those ports apart. So you take a bit of care. I mean, uh, in the cart, no, looking at it, no, no, I think it's going to be all right. I can, I can handle that. So let's pop all this back together. And the reason we've got to pop it together, it's not going to work properly without the clamps, so you can't really test it. Now, my return key, whatever reason, it's really sticky. It just loves to stick. I've not got clue why it's doing that and I'm not really sure how you get them out let's see I definitely it definitely did come out you can see it's just catching it doesn't look like these fall out good let's see if there's a way of popping this oh yeah there you go it does seem a bit sticky there Oh yeah, really sticky. Nasty. So it pulls out the bottom. That makes sense. Oh, that is that is horrendously sticky. I'm just going to go with a pretty brute force solution right now. I'm going to put that on there, and I've got my little pot of isopropyl alcohol, which I should kind of load into a syringe. Yeah, let's do that. So I've got 
got myself a fresh syringe. I've got to be careful. I've got to label these up because I've got syringes full of flux, syringes full of resin, and now a syringe full of isopropyl alcohol. If you're doing this at home, by the way, you don't have to use syringes. You can buy these bottles, and this is one that's filled with distilled water right now, which I might replace. This is These are really good for dripping flux and alcohol and cleaners on things. All right, so just going to get me some alcohol. So you can buy the uh, alcohol in quite large, useful bottles. And that is a good old amount there in the syringe. That's going to be useful for many a project. So I'm just going to take that and just put it, squirt it in the hole, basically. Big old splash there. I've got a clean brush. This is a fresh brush, by the way. This hasn't been used to remove any flux. It's one of my flux removey type brushes, but it's not been used for that purpose. So I'm just using it to clean that aperture. Because the return key, I think, is very sensitive because it's got so many of these um, features on it. It's got these three different features that are going to bind up if they're all wrong. So I'm going to put my alcohol soaked tissue in there. And try to avoid key faces because you don't want to erode them off somehow. I'm not sure how tolerant they are. I think most things are pretty tolerant to isopropyl. It's not too aggressive a solvent for those. And this was the really sticky bit, so I'm just going to really get in there with my hands. Give it a splish splash. And a brush. So hopefully that will work. If not, I'm going to have to do the whole taking the keyboard apart. But I kind of think from its construction, you probably could wash it. You could probably leave the keycaps on and just put it in a big old thing of fairy liquid and give it a couple of, you know, goes in that. Now, it's really important you dry off the alcohol. And the reason is, it's not because it's going to damage that, is that the alcohol now contains whatever was sticky floating in a suspension. So you need to take the alcohol off because you're basically, if you don't, it's going to dry and that sticky stuff will just be back exactly where you left it. So that's why it's kind of a flush. So you can see now here, if I turn it this way and I'm, oh, I've just used up all my alcohol virtually. It's basically you're flushing it through. So if we pop that back in now. Get rid of that. Be careful. Remember, all that stuff's going to be super flammable when you're done with it. Okay, seems okay. Won't really know till after. But that's not our number one priority right now, though, with this keyboard, is it? <laughs> so how does that go? That way or that way? I would say it probably goes that way, judging by the cutouts. Yeah. So these are acting as the springs. A couple of hairs here. I don't think they're my hairs, but I don't think we want them there either way. And we're going to have our membrane. I'm just kind of feeling it around just to make sure. There's some locating pins there. Getting it to locate nicely. And it is located. I'm going to hold that there. Right, which way round does this guy go? That other way. Or is it? Hmm. Nope, it's got a lip. I think I'd say the lip would go to the top if anywhere, but no. The lip would be sticking out the bottom. Yes, maybe we're getting somewhere. That is how it's done. And that actually lines up with the pins too, so that's good. So I'm just going to put a screw right in, though, where our repair was, because we want that's the part that we want really well and truly done and feel the torque on that one. Nice. And then just the others. God, this fan noise. I don't know if the fan noise is coming out on the speaker, but it's driving me balmy. Hours and hours of endless fan noise. Oh, there's our return key working. Nice. I'll do up the other other screws and then we'll have a look at those clamps. Dag damn it, we forgot this. Right, let's have a look at these clamps. 
Clamps McGee. So yeah, the clamps clearly are join all those layers together. So I'm going to be I'm going to kind of get it down there and in position first. They're all lined up where I need them to be, and then I think that should be okay. See, I'm going back and forth between each screw. I don't want to clamp one right down and one the other. I want an even force across the two. I do apologise, that was probably quite blurry, but don't worry, we've got another one. I'm going to jump between basically left, right, left, right as I'm tightening them. That's, that's what I was trying to show you. Let's do this one, get that down. So I'm pulling it in from here because I want it to be flat, and then I'm pushing that on top. I'm going to do a bit of right. Yeah. So now the right's just starting to bite. We'll do a bit more left. The left is starting to bite a bit more. Right, left, and right again. Okay, last thing to do is, I'm just gonna do our same trick with the pencil and uh, tin these ends basically, or I don't know, it's not really tinning them, but it's definitely, it's, it's doing something a bit like tinning them with solder basically it's adding that layer of extra conductivity on there and I'm gonna do this one here ah this one's the opposite side just to fool you right magic moments yeah yeah baby that's there, nice and good. So before we were just getting endless K's on the screen, so that's uh, that was our before. So let's see if our after picture is any better. And now the moment of truth. We're gonna power it on. There we go. We have power. Gonna hit return a few times. Yeah, it sort of works. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All good. C's. Continue, continue, continue. V, M. Yes. All appears to be kind of working right now. Now that's a lot better than continuous K's. Hope that's of some use to you. Please go and enjoy your keyboard. I'm not sure how good this keyboard really feels now, even though it's had all the work. Not great, but still. Better working than not working. Next mod, composite. Look at this AV signal. Terrible. Thank you for watching.